Hi there, this is Neve Engineering and today we'll be talking about the TurtleBot 3 by Robotis. So, welcome to Neve Engineering, my name is Keegan Neve and on this channel I'll show you how to, I build robots and other random things. I, if you're interested in the building of random things, um, like the uh, the rebuild of my uh, guitar in the background, we've got the, the electric skateboard I'm working on, um, mostly robots but random other stuff as well. Um, do subscribe to, to keep track of what I'm up to and yeah it's more the merrier. So um, as with most channels I also have a Patreon I'll put a link down here and more details about that at the end. For those who've been following I you've probably seen the Mick Fiegel Prime robot it looks a lot like Johnny Five purely coincidentally um, but um, he's the robot I built for Pi Wars. Now the reason why I've got another robot when that one's you know mostly fully formed is because I need basically and I've, I've got to a, a point you learning the robot operating system where I know the basics of how it all hangs together I know a lot of the terminology I know what need mostly what needs doing to get everything to the next step but I learn very much by example and the vast majority of the tutorials I've done all talk about the turtle ball now um, as you'll see in the rest of the video this is very well documented. This is, you know, you get the CAD models, you get all the code you need for various different distributions of ROS and um, examples of the wazoo. And that's what I need. So having this robot with the stereo cameras on the front, with uh, the LiDAR on the top, and most importantly, the URDF, the Universal Robot Definition File, means that I can see how it works, how it links together and modify what exists already to add the stereo cameras. Now, that means that once I've got this up and running, and in fact, in parallel to what I'm doing with McFeagle for Prime, I can be learning the navigation stack. I can be learning about uh, depth maps and uh, the point clouds created from them and applying that over to, to McFeagle Prime as I go. So that's why I got this robot and I'm already incredibly impressed with it. So um, I have no regrets at all. It is based around an open CR um, microcontroller board uh, with a pair of uh, robot, uh, Dynapix, Dynamixel servos. Uh, the kit typically comes with a Raspberry Pi, but there's other versions that run on the, the NVIDIA uh, Jetson board. And it has a LiDAR, 360 LiDAR sensor at the, at the top. And that is how it comes as standard. Now. I am lucky enough that I was asked by the, the folks at Stereo Pi if I wanted to test their version two, which is, I think the crowdsource crowdfunding finishes tomorrow. They're already at something like 193%. Congratulations to them as well. Um, so you'll be able to order that ongoing. So there's no rush there, uh, but still go check out their, their crowdfunding campaign. I'll put a link in the description. Um, they did that send the, this bot free, but I'm not getting paid. Um, they just wanted me to test it, which is very kind of them. So. This, as you may tell, if you're familiar with the, uh, the TurtleBot, isn't standard anymore. It wasn't standard as of about five minutes of me getting out of the box, in fact. So, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm testing the Stereo Pi uh, board. Um, so I needed to make a bracket for that, a, a little mount, um, as well as for the, the stereo cameras. And I made a new battery as well because I'm me and there's no cure. So. Uh, let's jump over to Fusion 360 and show you how I did that. Uh, as you can see here on the screen, there's uh, the, the wonderfully detailed CAD model that's provided by Robotis. Now this is in a, a, a step format. I don't know what that stands for, but basically it means you get um, everything you need um, to, to tweak and uh, modify the model to your heart's desire or to make one yourself from scratch. I've seen people 3D print these uh, waffle plates, as they call them, to change the, the design of the robot. Uh, the, the modifications I've made are a lot simpler, basically. Um, so, as you can see here, it's split into different floors. You've got the uh, the fourth floor, as they call it, which held the what holds the the lidar scanner. Um, you've got the Stereo Pi 3 Plus, which comes with the kit. On the the third floor. Uh, the second floor holds the OpenCR board, and then on the first floor, um, there's the two Dynamixel motors, uh, servo motors, and a lithium polymer battery, and that, that's what comes with the kit. Um, again, because they provided these step files, it meant I could take them and modify them. 
So what I've actually been able to do is if we switch off the fourth floor, you can see the stereo Pi board there, the version two, and the, the brackets I just showed on the video as close up as well. So the great thing here is, um, my face is gonna be over here, isn't it? So let's zoom in a bit like that. Um, the step file for the Stereo Pi is also available, which meant I was able to actually use this model to, to directly build on top of the other one. So if we switch off the Stereo Pi for a second, uh, Pi module PCB, there we go. So what you can see here is the, the uh, mounting brackets, carrier, whatever you want to call it. And because we ha I had the step file available, I was actually able just to create a sketch on top of the waffle plate. And as you can see here, oop, um, there's the um, holes through the bracket I designed that go straight into these holes on the on the waffle plate. So I was actually able to use the little studs that come with the turtle bot to mount this directly, which is, which is ideal. There's no modifications actually needed other than click and done. So the other benefit of the step file was from the perspective of the Stereo Pi. So if we re-enable that quickly, what you'll be able to see is right around here that this is the compute module. So this is based around the compute module four and yeah, it gives us a lot more power to play with um, and options on RAM up to eight, meg uh, eight megabytes. God, uh, that's a blast from the past. Um, eight gigabytes of RAM. Um, I've got the two gigabyte version, but yeah, still uh, more than enough for what I'm doing at the minute. But the thing is that where the, the holes are for the, uh, the module, PCB car carrier even, um, they're right up against the side of the compute module. So by having the step files available, I was actually able to put a step into bah, <laughs> the the um, the upright that the board um, slots into so that you can see it's only on one side. And because I had the step files, I was just able to see that that was going to be an issue and factor it in. I'm also able to have these holes so that cables can be routed through for the various floors for power, for uh, data and so on. Now, uh, as well as that board, because it's stereo by name and stereo by nature, I was actually uh, needed a, a mount for the two cameras as well. So again, same process. Um, this time, as well as the, the pass-throughs for the studs or the holes or whatever you want to call them, I was able to cut out these holes uh, for the screws. So as you can see with these um, standoffs here, that's how the the whole, all of the different layers are attached to each other. And basically in the version one of this, I didn't have those holes. So these two, this standoff and this standoff weren't actually attached to anything. It was just sitting on the top of it, which was annoying. So where I did pay attention when I you built the first one with the compute module, I should have paid more attention here. But version two um, and yeah, it didn't take long to print, thankfully. Um, one thing I will note if you're using these files, which are available and yeah, I'll put the link in the description is the camera modules I'm using are actually the WaveShare uh, camera modules and they sit flush against these mounts. That's because all of the components and everything are front mounted. So it's one sided board on this. Now the other, the standard Raspberry Pi camera modules, uh, they have the socket and a few other components on the back. So what you'll want to do there is, and you can see one here, um, there's little standoffs. I think they're three or four millimeter, uh, mil or something like that, but they're included on, on the Thingiverse page. So if you're using a different type of camera, you can still use it, uh, just albeit with these, these standoffs. And obviously I put in my cute little logo. Um, need a name for that really, don't I? But yeah, put the, the bit of branding on the front just because I can. Now, last but not least is the uh, the new battery I mentioned. Now, if you've been following with McFeel Prime, you'll know one of the things the, that I added to that robot was 
a BMS or battery management system. So the idea is that this battery management system controls the uh, charging and discharging of the battery it's attached to. That's That has a few benefits. For one thing, if you try and take too much power, it will just shut down uh, to protect both the battery and the the thing it's connected to. Um, I think mine's rated at 20 amps or something like that, which is daft, but you know, uh, does the job. The the other thing is, is is charging. So if you're putting power into the, the battery, it actually balances between the different cells. And in this case, it's a free cell uh, battery. It's made up of um, 18650s. Um, they're a very co com common uh, battery cell. They're about that sort of size. Um, I don't have one to hand, but that's a handy analog. Um, uh, in fact, they're 18 millimeters across and 65 millimeters long, hence the name. So uh, three of these comes to about 12 volts. Um, fully charged. I think nominally they're 11 volts, but that's, that's a um, thing in itself. Um, and yeah, with this BMS, I'm actually able to charge and discharge the, the thing at the same time. I'm not using the right words to describe this. Um, if you're watching this on a laptop, on a phone, you'll know what it is to plug it in and to be able to charge the device while you're using it, which is incredibly handy, as, as I trust everyone will agree. With the TurtleBot as standard, um, the, there's one of those little clips which I can show you over here. So there's two at the front there um, and there's one at the back here. So what you can do is that little yellow clip there, pull that out and then the battery will slide out once you unplug it, things like that. And the OpenCR board has a power socket on the front as well. Um, I don't know why I'm showing you with this on the, the CAD model when I actually have the robot in my hand. So you can see the uh, power port there on the OpenCR board. And what you're able to do is plug 12 volt supply into that, which would then power the board. You can unplug the battery, charge the battery, um, carry on working and then plug back in. It's not only a bit of a faff, but there's a 12 volt supply that is supplied with the robot that is used for both the charger and for this. So unless you have another one spare, you can't actually charge them at the same time. <clears throat> it's a petty thing, I know, but um, I'm also kind of lazy, or if that isn't the right word, possibly I strive for efficiency, we'll go with that. Um, so unplugging the thing and taking the battery out, putting it on charge and then plugging it back in, it, it's a bit of a faff and I have an easy way around it. So these these three, um, three cells that are in here, um, they were scavenged from old laptop batteries and I've got a, a cheap, oh, it's right there in fact. With this charger, what we're able to do is um, charge the batteries and then discharge them. And that'll tell us what capacity they have. And in the case of these batteries, that is um, about three amp hours. Now, the battery that came with it is, I think, 1,500 amp hours. Uh, 1,500 amp hours, but yeah, I'd have kept it with that. In fact, if it was 1,500 amp hours, I'd have probably thrown it in my car by now. But anyway, the, um, <clears throat> it's um, 1.5 amp hours. So it's uh, the through adding these this new battery, I've got more capacity. And also the, the handy feature of just being able to plug in through that charge port and charge it while it's powered. It's just incredibly handy. Um, so those those are the, the, that's kind of the quality of life improvement I made to this robot. And uh, yeah, it's it works a treat. And the, the next things I'm gonna be doing is actually getting these um, stereo cameras up and running and we'll take it from there really. So that'll be the next video. It's, um, I've already got kind of got the stereo cameras working from the perspective of streaming them, that's a whole topic in itself for various needlessly complicated reasons. Um, but yeah, if, if you're interested in in following this project and um, supporting me further for one thing, uh, an immediate way to support me is just by um, subscribing. I mean, it all helps with the, the reach and feeding uh, Google Tube's algorithm. Uh, if you like and all that sort of stuff, it'll make it more obvious to other users and all the rest. Um, if you want to support me in a more direct way, for one thing, you could also share um, a link to the video um, and spread the good word as it were. 
Um, but I also have a Patreon. So the the idea there is that everything I make will be free. That but the yeah, because I don't want to exclude anyone. So if if you're you're not able to do it, then fair play. Just you know tag along and join in the fun anyway. If you are able to help, it would help a great deal as as this this channel grows. And um, yeah, the patrons currently um, above uh, five pound and above level get uh, early access to videos and other content. Uh, as the the audience grows and I, I get a, a larger uh, following. Um, I'll be able to expand those further and, and look at um, what, what the, the needs of the community are, as it were, or the wants in that case. So um, detail, the link in the description, there should have been one down here for a while. And yeah, if, if you're interested, stay tuned for more and thanks for watching. Bye for now.